We are live. No recording, just live. Just one second. Almost ready for the recording. Let's do it quick. Three, two, one, let's go. Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to the Non-Intuitive Beats podcast episode, I think episode 80, 80, I think, I have no clue, honestly, and it's brought to you by the Leaders Club that you are part too, if you're listening to us, but do consider inviting your membership by joining our Discord channel, yes, we do do have a Discord channel, and today with me in this virtual studio, we have Dmitry Mananikov, say hi to everyone. Hey everyone, it's me again. <laughs> and as usual, the most annoying noise that you're hearing right now would be from me, Slava Kavlevsky. Uh, we do have Nishant, who actually have considering to joining us, but he's on the East Coast, and we have moved our time to a later in the day. It's like too, too late for him right now, but he's coming to the West Coast eventually, so he will be rejoining us. My friend... <laughs> It's been a while. It's been a while. Uh, I see that you have added uh, several topics. I don't know how big they are. Do you want to start with something of yours before we go to investing, for example? Okay, it's probably a small one. Uh, I usually bring something about gaming and games. Um, so because I'm not playing as much as before right, right now, I do lag behind for like with many games, like year, two years. And a good benefit of it is just like, I get them for free because I have PlayStation subscription and games that were released full price year two or two ago now free. Mm -hmm. uh, so one game that catch my eye recently was Outer Worlds. Essentially it's RPG from Obsidian. Oh man. Made, uh, mm -hmm. Did you play this one? Uh, Yes, uh, and I, I will ask you the question because I'm actually surprised to hear you playing it. But yeah, please continue. Yeah, the thing is like people who made, uh, I think, uh, Fallout New Vegas, which I didn't like, and I don't really like RPGs. Um, but this one, I, because it was free, I was okay, I'll just try it like for 20 minutes. If I don't like it, I skip it, like no, no harm. Uh, and I actually like it a lot. Um, it's It feels like a small, it's not it doesn't try to be like a huge uh, RPG about saving the world, like very local, very uh, cute stories. And what I like is this is a game where shooting done properly. Like it's really good shooting in this RPG. So I was focusing to uh, pull all like points, all levels into character things like hack, persuasion and other things. And I think it works very well. I, I'm very surprised why other RPGs doesn't do it. Like this game still has like, you can put points in your shooting, but they should actually remove it. They just keep, okay, you shoot yourself, but uh, use other things. And it was actually pretty short. I finished it like in one week, which I also enjoy. So it's like not huge open world. It's like few well-crafted locations, well-crafted characters, and I really like humor. I think this is one, I think like initially, it's not like a big spoiler, but Initially, you dropped uh, in a capsule from space to to your like to ground, and there was a person who was supposed to meet you, and this person holding a beacon, and you just smash it like to the dead. So it's like a bit of dark humor, but also nice uh, touch on everywhere. And I think I like another thing: the game show you like usually two two fractions for each quest, like some corporate guys or some like more freedom guys. And the good thing is they both like uh, good and bad in different aspects. So you naturally try to to manage them, to make them like like agree on something. Um, yeah. So it's a it was a surprise for me that I really like. By the way, I also would highly recommend this game. And uh, just to illustrate the humor of the game, it's it's a classic Fallout humor. And uh, for example, one of the planet that dominated, but one of the corporation when you uh landing on the planet one of the requirements that you have to accept if you're entering that planet is for you to say that your favorite song is the hymn of one of the corporation that's the only song that you're allowed to play and you're supposed to declare that it's your favorite song 
and uh, such a small thing, but this is so Fallout like. And the reason why I'm extremely surprised that you have mentioned this game, because really this game was released because, and by the way, I just see it's on the Nintendo Switch, <laughs> and really this game was released because there was no update of Fallout for quite some time, and 76 was horrible, so another company effectively released Outer Wars, which is Fallout in space, in the future, but that's about it, it's, it's really Fallout. Fallout in space in the future with a good shooting mechanic. I think that actually made the uh, made the game for me. Like it actually pleasant to shoot. Weapons are different, and I didn't like Fallout because shooting was like pretty bad, and you need to point these different limbs or parts of body of enemy, and you have chance. And I understood back then it was a way to to actually like how say emulate like a chances, right? Uh, but this one they just ditch it completely. So I really like this this way. Man, and uh, you know, this specific part that you just have mentioned is the one that I did not like because the classic Fallout should give you that. It should give you pick the part of the body that you want to smash and it will you give a probability to shoot that part of the body. Um, I don't know, it just was fun. Yeah, and then you, you know, like XCOM players, when you stay straight to your, like one meter from your enemy and you miss because chance was 99%. <laughs> yes, yes, yep. Okay, by the way, do you know, have you heard that they actually planning to release Outer Wars 2? Mm, no, didn't know. Uh, it's an official trailer. The trailer is as hilarious as the game overall. So I highly would recommend to watch the trailer because they even put a humor in the trailer. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really nice meta humor. I obviously have no clue when it will be released. I don't remember. But uh, 2024? Oh, no, no, no. 2025. Shit. All right. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. So... Let's move on to the second topic. I want you to share some interesting stuff around the investing. And maybe, my friend, you also you also have some, some interesting thing in your, in your investing endeavor. Both of us start learning more and more about the options. And uh, we bought this horribly huge book that can be used to kill people. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't remember the name, but uh, I finished the second chapter only. It's a really long book. But, but, it, it, it gives so many lessons and, uh, you know, the main lesson, the options are com complex. <laughs> That's probably all you need to know. It's a fucking complex investing mechanic. For, uh -huh. for me, it's not that options are complex, they're actually pretty simple. But there are so many hidden things that you don't really think when you, when you do it. How, how they behave, how they change, like how profile... Um, performance profile change when you buy a few of them. There are a bunch of strategies, like when you buy different types of options together with a different ratio, it gives you different profile. So it's kind of cool system, like it's simple idea of options themselves, but then they build like much, much more complex uh, investment things. You know, um, I no longer think that options simple like I, I i had exactly the same mentality options simple but there is too many details and just to illustrate you one specific example i used to think option is simple mechanic uh, uh, where you buying some you you buying this agreement that you for example you buying coal right you buying the agreement that uh, you can buy their shares by a particular price so you betting that the shares will go up so to speak now I'm more thinking about options um, in a different way. So if you're buying stocks, you're betting that stocks will go up, or if you're shorting stocks, you, you're betting that stocks will go down. With the option, now I'm thinking that you're betting on the volatility. You're betting that volatility will go up or volatility will go down. If you're buying, you're assuming that volatility will go up. If you're selling, you're actually assuming that volatility will go down. Yeah, but there is also strategies where you essentially have the same profile as the stock. If stock goes down, your money goes down. If stock goes up, your money goes up indefinitely. So the thing is that, you know, with the first lesson that I have to learn about, about the options, the market is efficient. Everything is priced in. If, if the community thinks that the, mm -hmm. that the stocks will go down, it already priced in. If the community think that will be earning, it will go up. It already has been priced in as a premium. Sure, I, I'm, I'm not saying like guess 
um, I can't remember, like, there was a, when you write put and write call or something, you essentially have the same profile, and the question why you do it, you do it because the initial investments is slower, lower, especially in your, in a margin account, things like this. Yes, and which initial investment is lower, but your break even is farther out of the money, a little bit further. Because you not only need to cover, you, you, you need to cover losses from one and winning from another. Yeah, you, need, you have commissions. Yes, I agree. You always like lose on commission, not commissions on premiums. Correct. So now think about this. You already have efficient market that have priced in uh, the value of one of the put and call. It doesn't matter, actually. So it's already priced in where the market thinks it will go. Now, you're not only betting that it will break more than that that market already priced in the premium you're saying that for you in order to get get any revenue or an income or or um, uh, earn about uh, on this it's actually need to go even further because you spend a little bit more so you're not only playing against the market you're playing against the market in the worst possible way oh yeah i i, I don't disagree with this one um i think one thing to consider i don't know how much weighted it right besides price tip i think market is not only pricing in like how stock is moving uh, but also things essentially insurance policy you know like when you buy uh, protective calls or protective goods uh, just to, to cover uh, cover your stock and i think some investment uh, funds they also do it so they're not only betting on stock to grow and that by why they buy options or work with options but sometimes they just buy them as insurance for so they they put some and i'm, I'm saying this may influence price as well but i don't know how much <laughs> my friend i have such a crazy story i'm going to share with you so it's, it's unbelievably crazy it's legendary so there was this guy who bought two puts one put uh, effective or oh, who sorry who wrote the put and bought the put so he wrote the put uh, to effectively earn the money and bought the put for protection now comes expiration date and when i was starting uh, learning the options i actually naively thought that if you're buying two of them like if you're actually buying together you're going to your brokerage account and you buying the chain your broker will understand that one should be used for protect another and with the auto exercise it's actually bullshit so this guy he have 40,000 k in the Robinhood account he buys spy uh leveraged uh, he writes a put sorry and buys a put now on the leverage he spends 1000 in total because of the difference when the day comes it's friday on the saturday uh on the saturday after market after market the price actually barely touches and makes his put that he wrote in the money barely in the money and it's got exercised. But his protective put is now already Saturday. He doesn't even know. He have not even realized that he need to exercise. And the Robin Hood have not exercised and uh, okay. exercised his put on his behalf. So on Sunday, he realized that he owns 40 million of SPY shares on his account with 40K, 40K dollars. 40 millions. I should you not. That's a famous story. You can Google it. And his only luck that by Monday, SPY opened with 1% gain, he sold everything and he got 200K. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he wrote- That's a bad story. Yes, it's not a bad ending. And uh, he has a huge post where he submit the screenshot because initially when this all have happened, and he obviously got, he, not that he sold SPY, he got margin call and everything got sold. Uh, so he wrote a post saying, I just earned 200K, don't understand how. <laughs> and then he wrote all the screenshot details and it just, just blew my mind. Yeah, when I look at uh, internet people who trade options, it looks like people just like to gamble. Like essentially they go to online casino and, and then like sometimes they win, sometimes they lose and people just have fun. <laughs> Yeah, investing, diversification, slot machine, all the same, <laughs> you know. Um, there is three strategies that any of us uh, have. It's what we should be doing, what we can be doing, and what we actually will be doing. And they're all three different. 
you know, when I'm looking at our podcasting notes, like at least half of this is verifiably inaccurate. And this has a lot about how much we're doing our due diligence for, for the podcasting and, and for the show. And when I realized that, I decided that I probably um, not qualified to doing proper option stretching, let's put it this way. So I switched to a second stage where I'm trying to find uh, some companies that will help me to do so and I will find some uh, verification bias, uh, confirmation bias that will help me to choose one of these companies, but actually switch to, uh, to, to trying to find people, services who provide, uh, who provide services for you to find good deals. They're explaining to you why these deals are profitable and um, Obviously, uh, it might look like a scam, which the first the first idea that why someone who can consistently generate profitable deal will be sharing it with anyone. Well, he, he's consistent profit on, on, is on you. Exactly. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So, yes, that's that's exactly the point. If you will but find... It, yeah, isn't yeah. it pretty much like what funds doing? You know, like there are funds that trade in options in an active way. They have people, managers who sit like traders whole day and try to manage fund. To some extent, yes, but what I don't like is that don't give you option to correlate the risk. So in this case, the guy tells you, here is the, all the inputs, now you do you. <laughs> you can do it with so many ways and you can do your bets. You can leverage up to your teeth and like, you know, and uh, or you can just buy shares, whatever you want. Um, so I found several services that I honestly like. I, I'm not sure that I can recommend them because I'm doing paper trading right now with tons of the options enabled. With some uh, trades where I was absolutely sure, I actually tried and they worked to some extent. But again, I'm not, uh, I cannot recommend just yet. So one is profits taken. Uh, so profits taken is literally executed by one guy. Uh, he charges $39 and he effectively gives access to several things. One is uh, uh, his Discord channel and his constant uh, YouTube uh, videos where he recording uh, 5 to 20 minutes overview of the ideas and deals. And uh, it's really hard to get in because he's really uh, have a very small team, but he's not doing it in the way that... Um, simplify entry point let me put it this way so what i mean by that he will be issuing tons of the videos with tons of the materials and a lot of the materials about the trade ideas that have started in the past and still in the progress and like 90 percent would, would be about those ideas and as you progress on the channel you find so slowly start realizing bits and pieces uh, putting the puzzle together you're realizing that at some point he's sharing uh new ideas and later on he will be coming back to them saying okay i changed the target price for that for those so quite interesting guy i would highly recommend to watch his video and uh if you considering dear listeners to even try and another one too actually i wanted to share this profit staking that i'm trying and seeking no not the seeking alpha the seeking alpha is actually a big one i really hate the big services because you never know are they actually producing any ideas or are they actually just big enough to tell everyone hey you have to buy this share and everyone buying it's you know like in the history of uh, stock markets there was multiple stories when someone came up with a strategy that really works public publish it to everyone and then stop working because everyone knows about it uh, i think one of examples was um on it still work a bit but not as much as before on ipo day uh, for some company try to buy something with slightly different letters and symbols like when when new company arrive with a symbol you remember zoom when zoom released to stock market there was actually company with the ticker zoom yes yes uh, you, you know, I, I am actually um, the one that think that market is uh, is um, uh, efficient. What I mean by that, that everything is priced in. But to be fair, when someone else coming back to me and saying that market is efficient, I giving them this Zoom example. <laughs> that a good example how sufficient is market in truly. You know the uh, funny part. I think um, it's not that people bought it by mistake. It's it was somehow expected right um the funniest part that after weeks 
of Zoom Real IPO and all news making this joke about the price of original Zoom didn't went down much. I mean, it it goes up, it went down, but mm-hmm. it didn't went down to level before. But wait a second, you're saying it was predictable or, or uh, how? How anyone could have predicted that Zoom, uh, ticker Zoom will go up by that much? Sure, maybe, oh, no. but... Like, it was predicted that it will go up. But I think I actually bought a few shares uh, and it go up, but I didn't expect it to go much and it went like some amount. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, okay, so this is a service, a predicting alpha. So predicting alpha, very simple service implemented by investors. And um, it's very, very homemade, so to speak. If you actually will give them their money, by the way, this unlike um, profits taken actually have a trial. So you can use the trial without paying them. And inside is literally, there is this, if you ever have wrote anything on R, the R has this framework shiny. Shiny is a framework for R language R, and Shiny is actually the most popular framework for R developers to create web applications. And this whole service is actually implementing with Shiny. It's actually even deployed on some some SaaS that. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it felt like you were about to say something. I thought R used for machine learning, you no, know, like data science things. Uh, this is like a MATLAB, the old days uh, m- machine learning, yes, or so those days machine learning that MATLAB was created. So yes, it's very old stuff. It's still used by researchers a lot because it's a, f- a language that's developed for mathematicians, so to speak. And in this particular space, I can clearly see that those guys were mathematicians. They created the models and they needed to productize those models. So behind this domain, if you will actually register for trial, they will give you access to their shiny web app, which is a very simple app. And they actually have a training. I love the training because training is the best tradition of what what I'm trying to do, everything with practical examples. Just even to give you a perspective, what do, do I mean by practical examples? They give you a scanner, they tell you basically how to use it, and then before diving deep, they tell you open the paper trade account anywhere you want and do at least three trades. Like blindly go and copy the strategy, apply it and then come back. So they are so sure that their trades working that literally it's not, you know, simulated trades. They they literally going and asking you. And this is kind of the part of, of, of learning that they give you, which is amazing. And to be fair, if I would try to uh simplify what the scanner is doing there it has more nuance a lot of nuances but on the higher higher view it's trying to assess which of the shares has realized volatility that is different from implied volatility so in other work world if he words if the whole market thinking that volatility is 40 percent but looks like it more like 20 percent they will suggest you to write the calls or write the puts or write a condor. If they will find something that vice versa, uh, when realized volatility is much bigger than, than implied volatility, it will suggest you to buy puts or, uh, calls to, or buy puts. Very simple things with tons of the nuances that allows you to tune nuances, do a back testing of your strategy immediately right there on the spot, and then execute it wherever you want. It's just, just a scanner, so to speak. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's that's another thing that I. Mm-hmm. Now you need to put a referral link in the show notes. Oh man, I don't have one. I yeah, well, <laughs> I haven't thought about this, but yes, yes. <laughs> um, now, last thing I want to share is this guy. There, this another trader example, like similar to the guy with twenty millions of SPY shares. There was this famous guy, uh, Tampa James. And Tampa James have, um, have effectively an investment firm. So where people can invest, it's not an ETF, but some company where you can invest and they will make your money disappear, but, <laughs> or, or multiply, whatever. Um, and um, here is, hear me out, my friend, I will, tell you towards his strategy of risk management. Okay. So his idea was take as much margin as you can 
and buy puts, sorry, not buy, write puts or calls so far out of the money that if the black swan will occur, your calls are so far out of the money that the price will never reach them even during the black swan event. event. But the whole point of black swan. <laughs> 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 yes, you got this what right. Happened. Yes, that's exactly what happened. And to be fair, to be fair, uh, in real, uh, I'm laughing, but it's almost what have happened. So because the strategy actually have worked to some extent, he kept using leverage to be writing more calls and puts. And because of that, when the Black Swan event actually have happened, it was when oil prices went up. The oil price, and this is true, never have reached the target price that he used to write the calls. So it never reached. But because he was leveraged and he was using so much margin and he was increasing the position constantly, he was not able to come up with enough cash to keep the position open. So he got a margin call, everything got closed. But technically just technically the price never have reached the target price so he might have survived if he just has several hundred more millions which he didn't um and now the fun part unlike etf this company was operating not like a classical fund this company was operating as a as a trustee that would be using and managing your account so what i mean by this that not only people have lost 150 millions that they have invested, they end up with actually owning money because it was their account that he was managing, not not the companies. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's another scary story from the investment. I would like to learn uh, stories like on opposite, you know, someone bought a call so out of the money for a few cents and forget about it and then suddenly like prices go up and this person just like became rich very easily uh you know i'm pretty sure if you try to google famous yolos um uh, wall street bets so wall street bets is a reddit uh where a lot of degenerates who are trying to um, who are trying to 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 act as if they are investors uh coming together to discuss different ideas and they have this tag yolo which effectively means that someone who is trying to invest everything they have putting everything on the calls and some of them actually succeeding they 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 but that's the whole point if you have like 10 million users of subreddit how many they have someone will eventually win a lottery that is pretty much like someone went to to Vegas and get a jackpot. I'm um, still keep coming there. <laughs> I want to be the next one. Uh, I don't mind. I don't mind. Um, okay, before jumping, this this all from investment my side. Anything to add about investment before we will go to the next one? Nope. It's not a financial advice. Oh yes, the nothing. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, nothing is financial advice. Yes. Um, let's discuss films because I also have uh, to share something and I see you added TV series. Let's start with your one and then I will meanwhile write down what I want to share. So tell me, what is this blue eye summary? Mm, it's essentially a story. It's animated TV series. Uh, it reminds me Arcane a lot from drawing. I think maybe it's like the same sub team of Netflix made it. Mm hmm. Uh, it's it's made in uh, Japan, like 19th century maybe. Um, so far, I couldn't say like I like hooked completely. I only watched like few series. My friends suggested who really like it. It's developing slowly, so I'm I'm still looking like where it goes. Um, but it's the, it's pretty fun, um, and I like it shows like some details of Japan that that time. Okay, so would do not, you recommend it? Um, not yet. I can say it's like a super like, for example, Arcane, the, their previous, like I really like it, like from the first episode. This one is like, okay, I just watch it uh, during breakfast. I see, I see, I see. Um, 
by the way, we have 11 people watching and we have one thumbs up and one thumbs down and we have zero comments. Whoever put us thumbs down, can you at least comment? Like, what motivated you to do that? Um, and plus, without knowing your login, I cannot ban you from the YouTube. So that's also also there. But, you know, that's a different angle. Okay. So uh, looking forward for recommendation, if you will actually decide to say that this is must watch or not. Uh, and by the way, the fact that this is Netflix is a huge plus. Uh, since my parents have moved to US, uh, we still watch we we watching English films, but it's Ukrainian subtitles. And everything on Netflix does have Ukrainian subtitles, so they can actually watch together, where they will be learning English. So everything on Netflix. Okay. Any recommendations? Okay. I have a baby problem. I have to go. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. See you. Okay. See you. Sorry. Uh, meanwhile, I have something else i want to share with you folks zone of interest so uh, i promise it will be short and after that we maybe will be finishing maybe not i don't know okay so zone of interest it's an interesting film that got released recently so i think you might be able even to find this in the cinemas still and the whole premise is the film quite interesting let me try to find for everyone who watching live the actual trailer so the whole idea of the film that it shows you the usual German German family uh, during the World War II that lives next to the concentration camps Auschwitz, and it shows the German family the fact that the normal family can live next to a horrors <laughs> that are happening. <coughs> sorry, that are happening inside of the Auschwitz. And to my understanding, the whole idea of the concept was to show that many of us like to think that we are really close with uh, victims who are in the, in, in, uh, in the camp. And in case of the development like this, we probably would be victims. But it's trying to show that we also have tons of the similarity with these oppressors because they're usual family, normal family. At least this is the gist that looks like the film trying to show. Because if you think about it, Germans uh, at that time, during World War II, it was normal Germans. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's probably the whole gist. I haven't seen it. But the idea feels very interesting because indeed we're trying to demonize everyone from Germany during that period of time. But in reality, they were the same human being. So this whole idea to try to show how the normal human being can actually end up in the situation like this. Why? What? What? How? How is it humanly possible? So that more or less idea, I, again, I have not watched the film, but I really, really want to see it. Um, because it feels like it stimulates some thoughts and uh, it might have a really deep thoughts embedded in the film. We'll see. Um, what else? What else? What else? This is probably all, my friends. Uh, since uh, Dima is out, um, I want to show just one thing. Just promise one thing. Sora. So we already actually have discussed Sora. Uh, it's a new model from OpenAI for creating the videos, right? And I want to show you a very specific and interesting example. So not this one, maybe it's this one, but no. So I wanted to find example and see why it's so interesting. And uh, this example, okay, let's let's try to look on this one. Um, so majority of the examples that you have seen in the past, if you have tried to watch something of a stable diffusion, you can see how the images are morphing from one to another, right? And you, you can see it without any problem, like they literally morph. And uh, obviously this is, this is a problem because uh, the neural network literally trying to imagine next image from the previous one. Why is this problematic? This is problematic because in order for you to change, for example, angle from which camera is looking or go to another scene, you cannot just do it from creating next image from the previous image. This requires you to imagine the whole world. This requires you to show the scene from an angle, one angle, 
and then redraw the exactly same thing from another angle. Why I am saying all this? In many examples, and I'm honestly trying to quickly find, let me go to YouTube uh, example with Sora, uh, alien, alien. So this is an example of Sora, alien walking. Yeah, so this is an example. There is an example like alien walking down the, I think New York street or something like that. And the important part that if you look here, in the example that they're trying to provide, uh, the camera is shifting around. And as if shifting around, you can actually see in some of the cases how the camera is showing exactly the same place after it, sh it shifts around. Why it's important? If the part of the, of the image or the part of the scene goes out of the view, and you're only generating next image based on the previous image, you're actually forgetting that part. So when the camera goes back and see the exactly same part in the view again, this means that the model actually have, quote unquote, imagined the scene and then start generating previous picture plus new one plus imagination, quote unquote, quote of the scene. Without this, quote unquote, imagining the scene and later drawing it, you would not be able to get the exactly same results. Ooh, welcome back. Yes. <laughs> uh, let me give you a very quick recap of what you, what I was, what I was um, telling about. You remember Sora, right? We discussed Sora mm -hmm. as a model. So, what is unique about Sora? Uh, is uh, if you take any other models, previous models, they, they they work in the way how they're trying to predict next image based on the previous one and create a video from this. But this creates a problem. If you're changing the angle from which the camera is watching, and then you're changing angle back, uh, the, the same place that was in the screen, then outside of the screen, then in screen again, will look differently. Mm -hmm. Now in Sora, in many examples that they're showing, they have this camera that's tilting around, and when the camera is actually goes to the previous parts, they have tons of the examples that show you that when the camera goes back, it's showing you exactly the same people or exactly the same place. Which they can do so they literally have two options. One number option number one, they have much bigger context, which much bigger span of the memory. Or they can have a second, uh, two stages approach that uh, Google Translator with neural network that translate from one language to another implemented. They might actually imagine the scene and then have this imagination plus uh, pictures from the previous, several previous pictures uh, be the input to the second stage that actually generates the future images. So in this case, it's literally imagining the scene and then it can move camera around because it knows the scene. I don't know which one, longer context or imagining, but clearly they did this. <laughs> this yeah, is super imagining cool. Imagining hard because I don't know how, how they would train because I can imagine how they train on the movies, but how do you train on like uh, the whole like 3D information about scenes that could be very hard or like where, where they would get data one thing i agree with you but um coming back to the example with translation uh they introduced this intermediary step where you're thinking a thought and then you're taking text converting to a thought then you're decomposing thought to a translation back and in this way, they actually were able to translate between languages that historically would not have direct translation that much. So what I'm trying to say that, yes, you don't have uh, the classical data that you might need. But the example with translation show that if you will find the data somewhere, it easily can be generalized after translate after training in that specific domain. I don't know. Maybe this is what happened. Maybe not. Who knows? It's not really an open AI. It's closed AI. They don't tell us shit. So, <laughs> fresh news: uh, Sam Altman uh, returned to the non non profit uh, non profit board for open AI. Man, fresh <laughs> a half a year ago when he returned. Well, was it like a couple of days ago? No. Wait, what? Uh, he was fired and he returned. Right? No, no, he was uh, fired from company and from the board. Then they created like an intermediate board, but now he's ah, back. Ah, 
Ah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, that part, okay. Back to the board. Specifically, okay. Uh, Sam Altman joins the board. Yeah, four hours ago, got published in the Wall Street Journal. Yeah, that's. I, I thought you were speaking about that news. That yeah. news. okay. That I news. really wish I I, I. I wish I know that what actually happened there. <laughs> I mean, one day someone will write the book, and uh, we all. Oh, will, no one will make biopic movie about it. One hundred percent. Yes. 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 Um. Honestly, I don't have too many other topics. That probably was my last one. Uh, so what about you, my friend? Do you have anything else you wanted to share? Mm -hmm. Actually, like on upcoming games, mm -hmm. uh, there is a game called Dragon's Dogma 2, which was on my radars for a while. But for me, it was one more open world RPG. So I was like, OK, I don't want to play this. But apparently, they, they did some interesting things like it looks like any generic RPG. You have like companions, you like action RPG, you fight monsters. Um, but this this game made by people who also made Devil May Cry series, so they know how to make fights. And there are like some interesting um, one screenshot I've seen today. Essentially, when you create a character, mm -hmm. you have a checkboxes for each tooth in a mouse, which one is missing and which one presented. Can you imagine this level of details? <laughs> Unnecessary. Uh, other funny thing, like, uh, for example, the game has a um, fast travel. You, like, you get on a cart and then you go to that place. Sometimes you can be ambushed and start fights in the middle. So you're kind of using fast travel. Another fun thing, uh, thing I've seen today, when you sit on a, like a campfire, like, you know, like safe space to up your skills, and you go sleep and then in the middle of the night you actually can wake up and start fighting because some monster actually attacked you campfire. Um, it looks promising. Uh, now I'm trying to keep an eye on it. I don't know if it's good or not. But it's yeah. uh, quite interesting. You know, that mechanic of fast travel, this is actually was used in Fallout 1 and Fallout 2. Like you mm -hmm. can fast travel in between uh, cities. But in, when you're fast traveling, you can meet someone and then your fast travel ends right there yeah. and you start fighting. Interesting. Yeah, it's quite an interesting mechanic. You know, since you're here, I'm actually going to tell you about the movie that I already told to our, to our listeners, but I would love to hear your perspective. And, you know, similar how with investment, it's not about profit, it's about fun with friends. <laughs> <laughs> similar like our podcast it's not about popularity which is by the way growing now we have 12 people who listen not 11 but nevertheless it's not about popularity it's about having fun so <laughs> everyone will have to listen again i will try to be a little bit more concise so this is a movie the zone of interest i have not watched it yet i want to the movie is interesting so the whole movie shows you the concept of normal german family uh that lives in the turn in the time of world war ii next to in the, literally next to auschwitz camp and the whole concept so uh if you for everyone who's watching us this is like auschwitz camp on the background and it's like world war ii right now and uh, obviously there is a uh, gassing happening they still still doing all this horrible stuff and so the husband is officer and um but the whole movie trying to illustrate that this is a normal family normal family under the circumstances and they're trying to convey the message that even though majority of us are thinking about ourselves, how we probably would be much closer to the victims, in reality, the chances are that many of the folks would be much closer to this family. It's a normal family under, you know, everyone around approve what they do. No one really even thinks what's happening behind the wall. Husband just comes back from work and uh, they enjoying the status, elite status in the society. And you know how slowly they're coming. I have not watched yet the movie, so I cannot comment more about the idea. But that at least what I learned from the interview is uh, that they published with the director. Uh, yeah, that's still the art. That's still the art. Um, it's, I would only say like it's quite interesting to see movies about um, like not only World War Two, but it's like especially like you know a lot of movies how like Soviet or American army like uh, get to Berlin, but uh, not many movies at least I've seen like that gets like things was happen inside. I think one uh, previous I really liked was Bunker. I think essentially oh. a Hitler bunker like when when they sit there with the famous scene where Hitler just like screaming on the people. 
uh, I think that one also very downfall to see this perspective. Oh, downfall. downfall okay. Yeah. Not sure why it's bunker. Yeah. Uh, it's quite always interesting to see like uh, other perspective and how people react as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. Uh, agree with you because we need to learn these angles and perspective how genuine normal human being eventually end up in this in 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 this state of being. Let's put it this way. Then maybe we can learn something. Um, I highly recommend the downfall as well. Amazing movie. Uh, yes, about the effectively last days of the Berlin and Reich and the fend of the Berlin and life of the Führer, Führer in the last several days before Sorry, he. I, I watched this movie because of meme. Did you? Oh, no, I, I learned about the meme later on, and that makes <laughs> me hilarious, like amazingly <laughs> hilarious. I was seeing like multiple variations of this meme. Like, hey, I, I should probably watch this or. <laughs> So, let me quiz you on the topic of the history. My friend, what is amazingly cool about Hitler? Like, super cool that Hitler should be recognized for, like that everyone should adore him for. And, and you know... I have no idea. He killed no. Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> he literally... Very efficiently. <laughs> yes, he shot him in the head. <laughs> Like who that 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 I think was remarkable. Everything else, no. That one, yes. <laughs> uh, anyway, on this note, <laughs> I suggest I suggest we we finish. Unless my friend, you have anything else? We still have a little bit of time, so we have any uh, anything else to to discuss? Yeah, I think it's good. Okay, thank you, folks. Uh, thank you for coming. Next time, same place next week see you yeah see you sorry for jumping back and forth Okay, we've done the recording, but life is still live. We have after show two seconds. Just give me two seconds. I will render everything and I will click the button that will stop live. Can, can you believe it's almost our 25th episode of this season? Maybe even 26 already. Actually, I don't know. But the, yeah, yeah. I still need better consistency, well, at least on my side, to do it every week. Uh, I think we used to be consistent quite quite reasonably and uh, after some time I don't know what have happened but yeah let's try to do it more consistency uh, uh, let me stop the live just give me a sec three two one see you folks